Anybody you like musically has given their whole life to it. And it will take your whole life. I'm Rob Ikes, and this is my bluegrass story. My grandpa comes from a long line of Scandinavian fiddlers. When I was a kid, we would have these family parties, and my my grandpa's family would come, and everybody danced, and, and he and his brother would play fiddles. You know, my dad didn't play music, but he was an expert on the radio. My dad has a great record collection, and I remember just putting on an album and just zoning out. And, um, you know, even he had a record of movie themes. And I remember just the guitar sound on the James Bond theme. <laughs> you know, but just the tone of that guitar. I just remember zoning in on that pretty quick, you know. And then uh, a few years later, I heard Mike Aldridge's first album. And I heard that sound and I just, it made me feel great. It was literally like a drug. It just, it just, I felt it <laughs> all the way out to my fingertips, you know. It really changed my life, you know. And I knew really early on that I was gonna do that, you know, I was gonna play the dobro for the rest of my life. It's so crazy, because it's just a piece of wood with some metal and strings and, and a metal bar, and it can make you change your whole life. It has this soul about it, you know, it has this feeling about it where, yeah, you can change the mood of a room by just playing a few notes. And to me, to be able to make that sound, you know, that that is what it's all about. So I just kind of spent my life trying to get better. <laughs> I'm just now realizing how, how gonzo I was about it, you know, and just that focus. It's a haunting thing. It has a lot of soul, I guess I'd just say that. <laughs> I got very fortunate, you know, Alison Krauss hired me to play on some records when I was still living in California. And that was some of my first times being in Nashville. And of course, I'd always wanted to move here because this is, you know, Nashville's where it's happening. Again, this is out in California, you know, so around on the West Coast, which is, you know, it's not the heartland of this music. And your whole family, your whole world is out here. You're leaving this atmosphere, you're leaving this planet, and you're going to a different planet, you know? And so you feel like a pioneer. My dad put 200 bucks in my hand <laughs> when I left, you know, that was all I had. And uh, got in my car and drove here, you know, from the San Francisco Bay Area. Now I'm working with musicians who are as gonzo about this as I am. And I just couldn't believe how good, you know, my guitar sounded with these amazing singers. And, you know, the whole thing was there and I was like, I'm moving here. <laughs> the decision to move to Nashville is a big deal, you know, just mentally. It's sort of like Everest or something. It's just been been a great a great ride and I'm still getting to do it. So, um so it's just been amazing. The dobro is one of those instruments. To me it's kind of like electric guitar because it again, you have all those bends and the sustain. It can work in any about any style of music. Um again, cuz it's like a voice cuz there's no frets. <laughs> Oh.
horses, bourbon, and the great outdoors. That's Kentucky, original, majestic, and wide open. In one day, visit legendary distilleries, explore horse country, or put on your hiking shoes and get out there. This is Kentucky. Come see for yourself. Plan your road trip at KentuckyTourism.com. Hey everybody, I'm Dan Tominski. My favorite magazine is Bluegrass Unlimited. It can be yours too. Get your subscription to Bluegrass Unlimited, the monthly print publication of bluegrass music since 1966. Bluegrass Unlimited includes feature articles on bluegrass history and tradition, current artists and bands, and so much more. Subscribe today online at bluegrassunlimited.com. And if you subscribe today using code MYBLUEGRASSSTORY, you'll save 15% of the regular subscription rate. The Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, located in beautiful Owensboro, Kentucky, is your destination for bluegrass music. With interactive exhibits, you'll learn about the early innovators of the music, like Bill Monroe and Flatten Scruggs, but you'll also discover the artists of today who are following in their footsteps. But that's just the beginning. Experience the music behind the exhibits by playing music in our pickin' parlor and by enjoying a live show in our beautiful theater. Appearing soon at the Hall of Fame, We Banjo 3 on March 18th, Rhonda Vincent on March 25th, Darren and Brooke Aldridge on April 23rd, Daly and Vincent on May 6th, and Dan Tominski on May 14th. Use the promo code on your screen to save on concert tickets at bluegrasshall.org. And when visiting the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, be sure to check out the exhibit highlighting the artists featured on the television show, My Bluegrass Story. Plan your trip to Owensboro, Kentucky today and discover your bluegrass story. Learn more at bluegrasshall.org. I jokingly tell people I'd hate to be married to a musician, you know, because <laughs> it's a crazy life. In fact, I think I even tried to tell her before, before we got married. I was like, I don't know if you want to <laughs> sign up for this, you know, because we were still living in California. And, uh, and I just said, I'm probably going to be gone a lot, you know, and it's probably not going to be fun at times. And, and, you know, she says she didn't care. She's never doubted me, even when I've doubted myself. When you play music, especially on the dobro, it's just like, you know, it's a fretless instrument. And I think there's something about that where there's a lot of times where it doesn't sound right, even if it is right. You know, like I'll be in a studio and I'll play something and I'll think, ah, I'm not sure that was in tune or not sure that was right. You go back and listen and it's fine. There's moments when it all comes together and it's like, yeah. And then there's a lot of moments where maybe it doesn't feel like it all comes together, even if it did on tape or whatever. So to have somebody just always there supporting you is invaluable, you know? It's, uh, it's a lifesaver. So this is Josh Graves' Dobro that uh, he played on uh, most of the Flat and Scruggs recordings. You can tell it has a lot of miles on it. <laughs> This did not sit at home very much. It was on the road for years and years, and we even have duct tape on it, so how cool is that? This is a very important piece of bluegrass history. Playing like this comes from Hawaii, playing a guitar flat and with a slide in your left hand. It started in Hawaii, and these Hawaiian guys went all over the world. I mean, they were rock stars from like the 1880s to the 1940s. So this Hawaiian style just took off and it got into country music and bluegrass music. But before Josh, um, Brother Oswald was probably the first dobro player of note. He played with Roy Acuff. And again, he was into Hawaiian music, you know, and he hung out with these Hawaiian musicians and learned. <laughs> big slides, real pretty stuff, you know. And Josh did that also, but he brought the blues. You know, these blues sounds to Hawaii, to this Hawaiian style, and man, nobody had done that before. So it's so cool. I haven't played this guitar before, so this is, uh, and it has that, still has that sound, you know. I said earlier, I call it a trash can, but I mean that as a compliment, you know, because it just has this brashness to it, the metallic sound that just, it's like a lightning bolt, you know. It's just a great sound. Find no cold beer in this 
song It's just a tale of how my baby done me wrong I'm gonna tell it and it won't take me long But you ain't gonna find no cold beer in this song Something about me always being gone But since you left me I've been crying all day long But you ain't gonna find no cold beer in this song In the heart of bluegrass country, on the banks of the Ohio River, there's a place where healthcare is different, where it's woven into the very fabric of our local communities, where doctors practice more than medicine, they practice living. Here, everyone cares for the patient and treats them like a neighbor because they are one. This place is called Owensboro Health, where a healthier community is what we do. There's a city where a river of music flows, where you're invited to discover its deep roots in bluegrass music and heritage and harmonies converge. It's a community that's just like the music it's home to, welcoming and authentic. This is Owensboro, Kentucky. This is the bluegrass music capital of the world. On June 22nd to 25th, 2022, Romp Festival takes place in Owensboro, Kentucky. Produced by the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, Romp features four days of music, camping, jamming, and much more. Immerse yourself in bluegrass music by experiencing live performances from over 25 artists. Plan your trip to Romp Festival in Owensboro, Kentucky on June 22nd to 25th, 2022. More information about Romp can be found at rompfest.com. My brother was a banjo player, so um, he's about five years older than me. So when I was a kid, yeah, I grew up hearing him play all these Flat & Scruggs songs, you know. So when I started playing the Dovro, we, we would jam on that whole album, you know. We knew every song, and we just like, okay, let's play this, let's play, you know, just go down in order, you know, and play the whole album. There's some real classic licks like, uh,
that's the way Josh kicks off uh, Reuben, which is a real bluesy banjo number. That was the first song that Earl Scruggs learned when he was a kid to do the three finger roll on. I still get that record out and it still blows my mind. Inside a dobro is the, what we call the resonator, and you can't see it. This is the cover plate, and inside is a piece of metal. It's called the resonator. And I noticed that this has a, there's two types, stamped and spun. And the spun cones are usually a little sweeter sounding. And I noticed this has a stamped cone, which ties in with that trash can <laughs> sound that I was talking about earlier. So I kind of bet this is the original resonator, uh, because if they did replace it, they would have put a spun cone in, because nobody makes stamped resonators anymore that I know of. And it just sounds like it, you know. There's another famous break to Salty Dog Blues. But that, <laughs> pow, you know, nobody had ever done that on the dobro before. Just, we call them rakes. Hear how loud that is? And that's another thing uh, that Josh brought to it was this rake. Instead of just going, you write rake across all the strings and it gives it so much more power compared to, hear how sweet that is? And Josh would go, and that break, and it's almost like a B.B. King thing, you know, like a blues guitar thing. I don't know where Josh got it from, but uh, I don't think anybody did it before him. So again, I mean, there's so many things he brought to the instrument that just weren't there before. To have this music represented in a beautiful place like this is major. Just starting to walk around here today is just, uh, it's great. It is a serious music. And once it gets in you, you just have to keep playing, you know, it is addictive. The Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, located in beautiful Owensboro, Kentucky, is your destination for bluegrass music. With interactive exhibits, you'll learn about the early innovators of the music, like Bill Monroe and Flatt and Scruggs, but you'll also discover the artists of today who are following in their footsteps. But that's just the beginning. Experience the music behind the exhibits by playing music in our pickin' parlor and by enjoying a live show in our beautiful theater. Appearing soon at the Hall of Fame, We Banjo 3 on March 18th, Rhonda Vincent on March 25th, Darren and Brooke Aldridge on April 23rd, Daly and Vincent on May 6th, and Dan Tominski on May 14th. Use the promo code on your screen to save on concert tickets at bluegrasshall.org. And when visiting the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, be sure to check out the exhibit highlighting the artists featured on the television show My Bluegrass Story. 
Plan your trip to Owensboro, Kentucky today and discover your bluegrass story. Learn more at bluegrasshall.org. American Patriot Getaways has cabin rentals in Gatlinburg for any group size or budget. From a romantic studio for two to a 13 bedroom chalet, we can help you make memories any time of year. Break away from the everyday and take in the fresh mountain air from our cabin rentals in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. Enjoy luxurious amenities like a steamy hot tub, exciting game room, breathtaking views, or even a private indoor pool. Find your favorite cabin rentals in Gatlinburg today. You know, I met Trey when he was uh, just a kid, you know, 11 or 12, and I was playing with Earl Scruggs, and Earl was a big fan of Trey's, and Earl would invite Trey to sit in with us whenever we played in East Tennessee, you know. And I thought, man, this kid's really good, you know. And um, and then didn't, didn't see him for a long time, and he came in to sing on a Blue Highway album. Um, and we needed, a, we needed a scratch vocal on a song that, that a couple of the guys had written. It was a great coal mining song. We were gonna send it to a very famous bluegrass artist uh, to, to do a guest vocal on it. And we wanted somebody to sing a scratch vocal so we could all play live, because the vocal will bleed over the instrument mic and then we'd have to replace an instrument. So um, the guy who owns the studio says, Trey Hensley lives right down the road. I'll give him a call. He can come do this tomorrow. And he had never heard this song before, and he sang the crap out of it, you know? I mean, I just couldn't believe how quick he learned it and how well he sang it, you know? He just sang it, just killed it. So a few days later, the engineer sent some rough mixes, and we all went, damn, listen to that vocal on there. And we said, you know, we could send that to anybody and nobody's gonna do a better job than what that kid did, you know. Um, and, and so we left his vocal on there. There's something about Trey where um, he, it's, music's very easy for him, you know, it's, it's easier I just, I don't know if I've ever been around somebody that talented. When we played Romp a few years ago, I believe that was our, one of our first festivals and one of our first band festivals. So we, we play as a duo a lot, but we've got a great rhythm section. Mike Bubb and John Alvey play with us usually. And I think that was our first festival with, with more of a full band, you know? So um, I remember it was kind of stressful, honestly, for me, just kind of, you know, because we hadn't done it that much. So it's like, okay, here we go, you know? Uh, but it was a great crowd and we had a great show and, um, and it was a blast. Goodbye. You don't have to slam no doors And I don't have to break down and beg you to love me anymore There's no chance in making up There's no hope for me what leaving's for Well that's what leaving's for Playing music is the best thing in the world and to be able to have done it for this long and to be still doing it and doing fresh music and, and writing music and, you know, I'm just as, I'm probably more excited about playing today than I was when I started. And I was pretty excited <laughs> when I started. The show is finally over, we can cue the curtain calls. We don't have to hold together. Finally fall apart With a chip on both the shoulders And a crack 